In this video we will make a miniature stone arch bridge in HO scale. The bridge is engraved in low cost XPS board. We will build it using a modular approach, so this can really be fitted onto any model railroad or gaming board. This video is brought to you in cooperation with 187 Precision Model Engineering. I've had for many years this wall, which is actually covering the main line, which is running behind it. I wanted to open up and I tried out different shapes of the bridge pillars. I have decided to go for stone arch bridge, but I anyway want it to be kind of light and tall. So I ended up with this design. I use styrofoam in this project as well as many other projects. This is also called XPS board. It follows the European standard EN13164. It's commonly used in houses as a ground isolation board. Now I slice this using a styrofoam slicer to 6mm. These slice sheets are used for the background wall and the floor in the tunnel. I'm putting up a link in the right hand corner how to build a really cheap and simple styrofoam cutter. Let's start with the back walls. The back wall will host these 12 statues, the waiting statues which will be made from HO scale model figures. And I'm planning to make cutouts in which they will stand. My approach to this will be to cut out the entire Cut out using a scalpel based on a paper template I make. I remove that and I engrave it on the side. I first engrave the back wall in the cutout using very small stones like this and then I engrave the frame. I then glue the back wall in the cutout using PVA glue, wood glue, to the frame and I keep it so it, the back wall is recessed as much as possible in the styrofoam like this. Yeah, let that dry and now let's engrave the back wall. The stones in the back wall will be about 6mm tall and 9mm wide. So I'm starting by engraving all of the horizontal stone lines which are with 6mm spacing. This is much easier to do without the cutouts in place since they will be sticking out from the wall. Then it's time to do the engraving with a little tool or a screwdriver. With all of the stones in place I now glue the cutouts back into the wall. Then I glue them so that they will be sticking out slightly over the wall surface and give a bit of contrast. Now the wall is kind of tall so I want to divide it. I'm cutting apart the wall approximately on half and I cut out one row of stones which I will glue back in a slightly elevated or out sticking position so the wall will look a bit more interesting. I use a spacer just a wooden stick I had lying around which was about three millimeter thick and then I apply that row of stones on top of that wooden stick glue it in place using PVA glue and then once it's in place I just pull that wooden stick out Okay, I think I'm quite happy now with the design of the wall. So let's smear some plaster out. This is a sand based plaster used for redecorations at home. So uh, the purpose here is to fill all of the joints and crevices between the stones with this plaster and also inside the cutouts and everywhere. So it kind of fills all of the cracks and joints. This uh, plaster will later absorb the black wash, the paint in the black wash very beautifully and give a nice contrast. 
all of the plaster that is still on top of the stone is removed using a wetted sponge. I just clean the entire surface with a wetted sponge. All right, now whilst the back wall is drying, we'll get started on the pillar and the arches. I first make templates from several packages. Now oh, this is a paper templates. My my bridges have an incline, so the joints in between the arches will not be, you know, perfectly 90 degree, but something else. This needs to be tested and measured. I put that paper template on a four millimeter plywood board. I tape over the cutting line. This is to avoid cracking whilst sewing. And then the tape can be removed again. Now we only need to make two holes in each and four pins to hold these templates in place on the styrofoam board edges whilst cutting. The styrofoam is just cut to blocks like this. All right, let's apply these templates on the sides of the styrofoam blocks like this. With the templates in place, we're ready to cut. The cutter I'm using consists from three pieces of wood and a cantal wire connected to a battery charger. This is all you need to make a kind of cutting like this. Let's connect the power and then we're cutting these arches. In total, four of them for my bridge project. I remove the templates and we're ready to sand it slightly. You'll see it has a kind of fibers, plastic fibers on the surface and they need to be removed ahead of the engraving work. So I kind of just sand it lightly, avoid pressing these fiber into the material surface because that will give the surface marks. I then put all of the arches in place just to check that I've got it all right and before I get started on the engraving. The engraving is started by making that arch. Then after that I engrave all of the stones around it. For this engraving I prefer to use a knife. That makes the stone look a bit sharper in the edges and make them more like a precision cut. Once that stone arch is in place, I first engrave the horizontal lines of stone in the arches and then the individual stones with the engraving tool. All right, now it's time to engrave the ceiling. You, that's the part which is seen inside the tunnel, which is underneath the bridge. I start with the edge here too. Then before I make the horizontal lines for the rest of the stones. All right, now it's in place. Let's do the rest. Once you have your speed up, it's about, you make about thousand stones an hour. So a large engraving project like this, uh, 28,000 stones, takes about 30 hours to complete. Then it's the assembly and painting time, of course. But uh, overall, it, this is a large project and you will typically only make one of these on your layout, unless your layout is very large. So it's not much of a big deal. And hey, the bridge will be there for a while and look very pretty. The sand plaster, which is on the surface, is wiped off using a wetted sponge. Here are the wooden templates for the bridge pillars. I prepared them in the same way as the arches. So I cut them out and made a hole for the fixing needles or fixing pins like this. So I apply one on each side of the styrofoam blocks and then I just cut with my styrofoam cutter like this.
All right, and here's the pillars. The only thing that remains now in the pillar is the cutout for the the bridge span, the arches. That is kind of a just a cutout like this. So I make uh, two simple wooden templates for those as well, and I cut them out using the styrofoam cutter. Now time for engraving. The engraving of the pillars works just the same way as all the others. I start with this uh, carrying stone arch, the edge stones. So I do them first before I start with the stone wall around it. All right, now they're finished with the engraving. Only thing that remains now is that I thought of having smaller stones inside. So I make them with a small engraving tool and I make them only three millimeter tall. Each stone will then be engraved to a width of about five millimeter. For that, I use my small engraving tool, which I fold it together from a sheet metal part of brass and it's really fast and simple to just do the engraving with the plaster in place it's time to paint i do that from uh, white black and burnt umber the white and black i mix those two first to get a good gray tone and once i have the desired gray tone i just add a bit of that burnt umber to Give the gray a warmer tone, more natural tone. Once the gray paint has dry, the gray paint that covers everything currently, then I start to paint details. Here I paint the arches with a kind of light gray color. And then I continue to add you know, brownish, reddish or blackish stones in the wall. I know it can look a bit worrying at this point, but we will have a significant amount of black wash over this. And that wash will like fade all of the differences in the wall, so it will look very nice. I promise you that. The wash is two part black paint, acrylic paint and eight part water. I cover everything with this black wash, the back wall, the pillars and the bridge spans. Once dry, it takes on a much lighter tone than what it looks originally when you're applying the black wash. When all of the parts has dried properly, it's time to dry brush on some white acrylic paint. The purpose with this is to highlight the contour and the texture of the wall. It can also be used to get a more bright tone, a light gray tone, if you think it became too black from the wash. With all this in place, I start to assemble the figures, the statues endlessly waiting in each portal. With the figures in place, I also apply a bit of black wash on them too. I wanted the statues to stand out a bit from the wall and not just disappear there inside the tunnel. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a SMD, a surface mount LED white in front of each statue. So that will give the effect of having a, a bit of spotlight on each of them. So what I do first, because I've had these in my bin for a while, is I, I tin the terminals first and then I solder wires to the terminals like this so all of the terminals have the wires. Then just make two holes for the terminals through the styrofoam wall like this and just push that LED inside. Yeah, great! I had to reduce the forward current on the LED a lot down to one, about one milliamp to avoid it being too bright. 
So I connect three of them in series. Each LED has a 3.2 volt forward uh, voltage. So that sums up to about 10 volt. And then I add another a series resistor of 3.2 kilo ohm. And that in total gave nice light. Now time to put the pillars in place and also the bridge spans. So I'm trying this. It seems to be working out pretty well. Yeah. Great. Now the bridge is taking shape. And for first time you can see what it will actually look like. Yeah, mighty bridge. But hey, we're missing the support pillars here. I did trials on rectangular and square support pillars, but I ended up with round, like the Victoria Viaduct in Washington. So I'm making a, a wooden template from four millimeter plywood to put in each side of the styrofoam block. And then I cut it out with the styrofoam cutter. The cutting process is somewhat um, no, not perfect, so you need to sand this rounded pillar a bit afterwards. When it comes to engraving of rounded objects, I prefer to make the engraving like this. I have a knife and then I just press that knife and making the lines, the stone lines first. And then I do the engraving with the engraving tool afterwards. A lot of stones in these two as well. For the rest, I'm following the same process as I did with the other parts, meaning I put some plaster in the joints and the crevices and I remove that plaster with a wet sponge from the surface, leaving the plaster only in between the bricks or stones. Now I painted it gray I wait with the black wash because I want to put that on when I have it in place. That is to get the same tone as the rest of the stone art bridge and to let that black wash spill over also to the surrounding surfaces. We need also to have that stone row on top to cover the joint between the plywood and the engraved stone spans so I'm preparing those in the same way glue them in place and fix them temporarily with pins until the glue has set and here comes the black wash a lot of details can be added to a bridge like this like railings and other things I'll add details over time but the drain pipes. I make those from 3mm brass tubing. I cut to length and paint them in a rust brown color. I glue them in place using PVA. Alright, we're done! The first locomotive of the bridge is the beautiful V5. It's a diesel shunter manufactured by Henschel in Germany in the 70s. The blue paint scheme seen here is characteristic for the 90s. This super detailed model from 187 is for two rail DC and DCC systems only. It comes equipped with a sound decoder with authentic sounds sampled from the actual locomotive. The detailing is just amazing. The locomotive is powered by a Faulhaber motor and has a built-in power pack to ensure smooth running even on dirty tracks. Visit 187 webpage for more information about this locomotive.